Welcome back to Collecting Cars. Now, it's hard to look at a BMW Z8 without remembering the Bond connection, and after the rather pathetic cameo of the Z3 in Goldeneye, we were all quietly hopeful about the BMW Z8's appearance in The World Is Not Enough. A much cooler and more appropriate car for Bond. What we wanted to see was Bond in a car chase, power sliding through some conveniently placed veg boxes and redlining that M5 V8 engine whilst deploying machine guns out of the perfectly placed headlights at the front of the car. But no, the car wasn't ready when filming started and so the Z8's only real screen time saw a fibreglass mock-up get chopped in half by a tree saw. So the film didn't do much for the car, but that didn't matter and there are two very good reasons why. Firstly, the way it looks. Pretty, purposeful, elegant and aggressive. Almost every angle is an eye pleaser. And secondly, they put a proper M engine in it. Remember the Fisker Karma that I drove a couple of weeks ago? Well, if not, scroll down and give it a watch because that car and the BMW Z8 were actually designed by the same guy, Henry Fisker. Well, this was another of Fisker's pet projects. The precursor to the Z8 was exhibited at the Tokyo Motor Show as the Z07 concept, a stunning retro classic harking back to the 1950s 507. BMW manufactured 5,703 Z8s between 1999 and 2003, the majority of which being in the launch colour, titanium silver, which makes this black one all the more rare. The Z8 is powered by the S62 V8 from the E39 M5, which in its unmolested form produces 394 brake horsepower and 369 foot-pounds of torque. 0 62 is a claimed 4.7 seconds. The engine is mounted behind the front axle, which enables BMW to maintain a 50-50 weight distribution that it's so proud of. The gearbox was also donated by the M5, but sadly it didn't inherit the limited slip differential. This BMW has taken a timeless design from the 50s and sharpened it up at a time when the internal combustion engine was reaching its pinnacle and before new technology and legislation made it unfeasible to build such a car. The Z8 copped a bit of flack when it was launched and I think that was probably because it wasn't clear at the time where BMW was going with it. It wasn't an out and out racer, it wasn't a long distance cruiser and it wasn't a reasonably priced mid-level roadster. It was £86,000 when you, for that sort of money, you might find it hard to resist a Porsche badge. You could have had probably a very nice 996 Cabriolet for that sort of money. So unless you were particularly after a 507 homage, you might have put your money elsewhere. It's fair to say that this was probably before its time when it was launched back in the early 2000s, but now a manual V8 Roadster from BMW is a very rare thing and the appreciation is really starting to grow for this car about time too i say the z8 has a very broad stance from the front and a grin from this very retro split front grille the shape of the bumper and the bonnet very much echoing that of the 507 and those design cues continue down the side of the car with these gilled vents the side vents also house these BMW roundels and actually it was quite unusual around the 2000s to see the roundels anywhere other than the rear and the front bonnet of the car but on the Z8 you've got them either side on both of these side vents. There's also quite a lot of chrome on the car. We've got it on the side vents, the washers on the bonnet, the wing mirrors and the door handles. And an interesting thing about the handles actually is, is that you can open up like that and flick across and then you can actually insert the key just in there. Can you see that's quite cool, isn't it? Now come around the back of the car and these rear lights are a mere slither. And actually what's quite interesting about these is that if you look through the glass here, there's actually a neon tube that sits behind there. And BMW say that this will last the lifetime of the car and not need changing. It's all very neat and compact at the back here. We've got those lovely neon rear lights up there and then below there are two separate red lights either side of the number plate. The one on your left is actually your rear fog light and the one on your right is your reversing light and they kept a red tint over that just so that it kind of all matched together at the back there which I think is a really nice touch from BMW. And then we have the boot which is a very sensible size for a roadster. No real luggage compromises here unless your passenger happens to be Elton John. 
Simplistic, retro and quirky are three good words to sum up the interior of the BMW Z8. The dash is uncluttered and minimalistic. The steering wheel is unapologetically retro with its wire spokes. And as for quirkiness, we've got plenty to choose from, starting with these instrument gauges in the central binnacle here. But the great thing is, is that again with BMW, they've angled everything towards the driver. The switch gear is also quite minimal and they've really slimmed everything down, right down to the sort of the heating controls here. And they're sort of rear and front demisters. They're actually really tiny, small buttons, but that all makes sense because it really then gives this clean, uncluttered dash. And they've gone so far as combining switches. So the roof switch here is just one piece and that's the same for the fuel and boot lid switch, which sits nestled right down by your left leg here. The combined switch gear appears again on the driver's door with the sort of window buttons here, which actually you use in the same way that you would to operate your wing mirrors. There's a little toggle for left, right and middle. And if you put it into the middle position, you can actually operate both windows at the same time, which is quite a nice feature. Something else is quite cool. You normally have sort of buttons for your reading light or your map light. But in this, actually, I'll just switch the ignition on. This sort of red light here is normally sort of a, an alarm sensor or something in most cars. But if you just sort of turn this here, it actually activates the lights either side. Can you see that? Very cool. And whilst the retro touches might age the car slightly, the simplicity of it means that it feels quite contemporary even now. Sure, there's no infotainment system and the radio navigation is all a bit out of date, but I really wouldn't worry about anything like that. You probably won't use it anyway. You'll be on your iPhone or something. It is a roadster in the truest sense, so there's nothing behind you. There's no storage there, but you have got that very well-sized boot behind you. And then in the cabin, there are some quite cool storage bins. There's some in the central armrest here. You could probably pop a phone in there. You won't quite get your sunglasses in there. I tried earlier on. Um, and then down the side, on the driver's side, on the passenger side, you have these little handy bins to the side of you, which is actually very good. No cup holders, though. Our obsession with coffee hadn't quite started until a little bit later in the millennium. Operating the hood is very simple and just a touch of this button. Windows go down and it takes itself back. And pretty quickly, I must say. Putting it up is just as straightforward. Interestingly, it takes a few seconds longer to go up and then you have to finish it off manually by just pulling it down like this. And then it closes itself. Right, hood's down, so time to go out for a drive. You do get a key with this to turn, so you pop that in, give it a turn for the ignition on, put your foot down on the clutch and hit the engine start button. And away you go. Now the Z8 is by no means a lightweight roadster, but it's nicked its brakes from the 750 IL, which means that stopping is absolutely no problem at all, because that car is much heavier. And despite having 400 brake horsepower at your disposal, you find yourself not burying your foot into the floor, because actually it's quite a nice cruiser, this, rather than that kind of out and out racer. I think that perhaps having the M5 engine in it meant that people thought that it had to be a real racer and be fantastic when you get it onto the twisty bends, but actually it's just lovely to have the torque of that V8 engine. Oh, it does sound good. This car has got such an awful lot going for it, and of course you just know that wherever you pull up, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to find yourself parked next to another one. It's a real shame that the likes of these are probably never going to be seen again. It's all hybrid and electric from here on in. So a manual V8 BMW is probably not going to be something that we get to enjoy. So what a pleasure it is to drive it today. So thank you, Mr. Fisker, for giving up your summer holiday to design this car because it was well worth it. And if you want to know what one of these costs, well then you're going to have to check out the auction on collectingcars.com.
I think BMW knew exactly what they were doing with this Z8. They were building yet another timeless and collectible classic. Driving it is a good reminder why a simple recipe never fails to delight you. For more videos of collectible cars, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thanks for watching and see you soon.